half of the Bush Village area. We are experiencing a bit of unemployment. The boys are unemployed, unemployed, they think we deserve better. And so far, we have made up our minds to rub shoulders with the Barbados Labour Party and Trevor Preska and even him as our candidate. Um, another concern is the young people. I have a son who is 16, 17 years old at any time. He can represent Barbados. He had a two-year schoolboy scholarship in England. He was unable to attend because the full cost was at least 700 pounds a month to maintain him. Um, right now he's looking forward to going on another trial in North Carolina. I'm hoping that it works and he goes professional. Um, I've been trying to find unemployment for the last employment, sorry, for the last four years. I've been unemployed with two kids, unable to find any employment, unable to really make things happen for him. A son of the saw who at any moment can be representing Barbados. And I think that the government needs to do better to pump and inject something into these youngsters who would make Barbados proud. I went to St. Giles Primary School. I used to knock around here as a boy. And it is almost heartbreaking to see what is happening out here, especially in Lickridge Village. The major concern with the people from Pressy's constituency have to do with environmental issues. We have allowed, well not we, the government has allowed this constituency to become completely run down. The Ministry of the Environment has proven itself, or the Minister of the Environment has proven itself not just incompetent but indifferent to the plight of people. Behind us, you can't even see it. I mean, right where we are, there's a well back there. And when that well overflows, everything washes and comes right down here. If you just look short here, you see in the trail of the garbage where the water goes. People in Barbados should not be living in this, and these things can be helped. The government has turned a blind eye to the people of this constituency. It has branded a lot of the people in, in this constituency squatters and it has ignored them. It's ignored their plate, written them off as illegitimate. And that is inexcusable, especially when one considers that from as far back as April last year, the government of Canada extended the facility, offered a facility to the government of Barbados to put in a reverse osmosis plant that will solve a lot of the issues in the belt. The reverse osmosis plant basically strips away a lot of the nitrates. Um, that will bleach into the soil and contaminate the, the water supply. If you combine the reverse osmosis plant with proper sewering, then a lot of the issues that are faced by this community will be solved. People will be able to make themselves legitimate where they live. They can get back in mainstream Barbados. The government will have no excuse to not put the resources necessary to raise the standard of living for the people out here. It is unacceptable and it, it doesn't make sense to point fingers and say this government didn't do it or this problem existed for long you have to play the hand you're dealt government is about dealing with the issues of the people now or as they arise if you look around the issues of the people now are obvious and they're painful it cannot be an excuse to say that somebody else didn't do it the dlp government is in charge of barbados the responsibility for governance and for the uplifting of the people in Barbados and the improvement of their circumstances rests solely and squarely on the part of this Democratic Labour Party government. How can they be talking flippantly about the next five years when they've done nothing for the last nine years for the people of Barbados? have had all the excuses for nine years. If they get back in, what do you expect? You expect action now? But you learn from 2013 that action doesn't fall in action. If this government gets back in, it is just going to skate downhill with speed. Like the water rushing down here when the rain falls. It is not just incompetence. I place a lot of this blame squarely on the shoulders of the Ministry of the Environment and its minister because ministers are responsible for their ministries. Minister Law has a lot to answer for to the people of Barbados with respect to their living conditions and with respect to the degradation of the environment in Barbados. The environment has gone downhill. People say that the economy is more important than the environment. Then tell that the man who is holding his breath when he's counting his money. It doesn't work. We need to live in our environment. And his, his indifference 
is not just in his ministry, but it also extends to his representatives. I could not believe when he threw some constituents under the bus and alleged that they planted a post a sign on his property with the most profane... Uh, uh, sorry, I, I'm, 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 they're striking me really hard because I, I spoke to the people who were concerned. It is inexcusable for a minister to stand up in parliament and without any cause tell the most pointless, inflammatory and baseless of lies on the people of Barbados and on his own constituents. You see the problem is, he thought it was us. He thought it was the BLP doing it. But I can tell you something, right? I have told my own people, please not go anywhere near that man's house because I cannot account for what he's going to do. I can't promise your safety. And he has proven my words right. He took the opportunity of his completely pointless lie to warn Barbados and Barbadians and his constituents don't come round his place because he's prepared to defend his life and his property with everything that he has. That is not a minister who is caring for his people. That is somebody who's indifferent to what he says. He's indifferent to what he does. He's un indifferent to the people in his constituency and how they're impacted. And he's indifferent to the people of Barbados and how his failure as a minister is impacting upon them. This situation, what you see here, it should never be allowed to exist. This is almost unfit for people to live in. And the issue is not with the people out here because there's a lot that they can do, but also there's a lot they can't do. If you look at the pipes, I don't say guitar strings, banjo strings, some people have water, some people don't. Half the pipes are leaking, the moss is everywhere. There's a smell quite often out here. Mosquitoes like bush. And look around the people unhappy. But people are afraid in Barbados to speak up because of the utterances of some ministers. People are afraid to represent themselves. But I'm letting the people of Barbados know. And the people of Lake Christian Village. And the people represented by my good friend Pressy. I'm letting them know. If you're afraid to speak up for yourself, don't worry, we are not. We are here to represent you. Trevor Prescott is not afraid to speak for you. It is time to change things. Look around you. This has not worked for you for the last nine years. We are promising you better. Do what you need to do to provoke a change, a peaceful, bloodless, change in Barbados and we will do the rest. Hope is around the corner with the Barbados Labour Party. Hope is around the corner with the Barbados Labour Party. But hope for tomorrow starts with action today. And I'm glad to support the Access funding to be able to set up a business. You still want to ensure that you don't see worse pipes, um, you know, running along the floor, that the pipes are not exposed, that people aren't having to, you know, almost expose themselves to risk of injury to be able to access your property. I mean, when you look around, you can see how, how dirty the environment is. And obviously, if someone is setting up to do a business in the community, it is going to be difficult for them to do so. Most of the people nowadays cannot afford the rent to be able to go and, um, you know, spend money on rental income in town or any of the other areas. So people want to be able to set up their businesses from home, um, to be able to start to, to, um, to set up you know, businesses that they can certainly expand at a later stage. But in this current environment, even though government has allocated those funds last night, the challenge is, is that they promised $50 million to the small business um, enterprises and they only granted $10 million. And they've only capitalized the, the funds initially with that amount of money. When it's opening back, there's far more money that is required. The question is, how many people in Lake Bridge Village and across in Michael East will have access to those funds? Really and truthfully, we needed access to these funds several years ago. Because there were small things that the Barbados Labour Party was saying to this administration that it could do to basically energize the small business sector. If small business people have the opportunity to be able to do for themselves, there is less reliance on the government to do for them. And you would see that once people have access to funding, it makes it easier to provide for themselves and for their families. People in St. Michael East don't want handouts. What they want is the technical assistance, the, the funding assistance to be able to generate not only the, the ideas that they have and put them on paper, but be able to stand on their own two feet and be able to say, I have created this particular enterprise for myself and my family and for future generations. The Democratic Labour Party has denied the
the people not only have said, Michael, is that opportunity, but it has denied the cross-section of Barbadians that opportunity to do better for themselves. And it is unfortunate that as we go across Barbados on BLP on the road, the cries of the people of St. Michael East are shared by so many other constituents. People want to be able to do for themselves. We appreciate that you can't continue to rely on government alone to be able to do for you. And so that's why we took a decision in the Barbados Labour Party that you had to encourage people to do for themselves more. But those funds that have been allocated obviously is not enough at this point to be able to allow persons like yourselves in these communities to be able to set up and to establish your businesses. And I think it is an unfortunate situation that we find ourselves in. It was simple things that this administration could have done. But of course, we are on the eve of an election and all of a sudden funding has gone into a fund that has sat there undercapitalized for the last nine years. But now we're being told, oh, there's access to funding. When in truth and in fact, the, the, perhaps the demands that are going to be placed on the fund are actually going to be far greater than what has been actually placed into the fund at this point in time. And those are serious things. We, we understand that things are tight in the country, but we still believe that there is hope that we must give to our people to be able to bring ourselves oh, out of what we are experiencing. You know, I genuinely believe this. We can't keep telling people the same thing. This is about a time where people need to also look to be able to do for themselves as well. But if you have a government that is not prepared to first of all listen to the people and talk to the people, then you find yourself in a situation where people are frustrated. A lot of our young men and stuff, they talk about the young youngsters on the blocks. But at the end of the day, I mean, if you're living in an environment like this, you're far from motivated to do better sometimes for yourself. And if access to capital is one of the key things that you need to set up your business, obviously if that capital is not there and that you, know, you, you have difficulty accessing the funding, of course people are going to be deterred. People are going to turn to other avenues that will bring quicker revenue than the traditional forms of making money. So I think the people in St. Michael East need to appreciate <laughs> if Barbados Labour Party administration understood before what it is, what is required to be able to, to grow our economy. We are the same Barbados Labour Party and we understand what is necessary to be able to grow the Barbados economy. It's not just about pretty talk, but we understand that we have to capitalize these funds in a way that is meaningful to people in communities such as this, so that you can again be able to take pride in what you do, to be able to, to take pride in the ideas that you have, and to be able to again not depend on anybody for your source of revenue. Thank you.